Praise the Lord. Before we start the service, I will ask my wife to read Psalm 46. If you have Bible with us, please turn with us to Psalm 46. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountain quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is her fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, this morning we have come as we are with our own plea. With all our nature, sinful nature, and basically, as Paul said, there is another power working in us, O Richard Man, that I am. Who will deliver? Thank God for Jesus Christ. The same cry, Lord, Father, even thousands and thousands of years, Father God, but yet, Lord, we have Lord Jesus with us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are with the Father with all glory and left everything, came down to this earth and allowed your body to be broken, your blood to be shed for us so that we are forgiveness of sin. Yes, Lord, we have been washed by that blood. Thank you, Lord. You are restored and the power of resurrection is in us. We may live a holy life for us. Thank you, Lord, Father. Your power and your presence is always with us, Lord, Father. We will continue to enjoy, Lord, your power in us so that we may live a life that is pleasing before you. I pray, Lord, Father, this morning we are gathered in different places in our own homes. Yet, Lord, you are with us wherever we are because of your promise. I pray, Lord, bless our time this morning. I pray, Father, for Mr. Devidar as he speaks your word. Lord, pray for, Lord, anoint him and pray that, that the word will be a great blessing to us, O oh, Father. Not only let us hear the word and go away, but, Lord, practice in our life, Father. I pray for the blessing upon him and his family. And, Lord, we pray that, Lord, in the Sunday school, Lord, we pray for the Sunday school children and also the teachers, Lord, as they gather together, even, Lord, from other countries, the children join, what a joy, Lord, Father. They pray, Lord, bless the Sunday school and pray for every child. Beautiful children, you have entrusted in your hands, Lord, Father. Every child may, Lord, grow in you, experience your love and grace, even the tender age, and commit their lives to you the days to come, Lord. As they come down and bless them in the name of Jesus. We pray for the little ones, Lord, Father. We remember them, Lord, serving you in your sanctuary, Lord, Father. And I pray, Lord, bless them, Lord, Father, because the kingdom of heaven is like little children, Lord, Father. And I pray and bless every little child, Lord, Father. They commit, Lord, Father, for youth, young people, Lord. They are also having youth fellowship wherever they gather, Lord, bless them. And Lord, they are studying at home. And also at the same time, Lord, fellowship through this technology. And Lord, we pray the time together may be great blessing and joy, Lord, Father. Bless every young people, Lord, Father. Thank you for the families. The families are precious, Lord, Father. And I pray, Lord, in our, in our fellowship, 
Lord, I bless every family, Lord Father. And Lord, help us to love one another and pray for each other. And also, Lord Father, that you may all grow together, Lord, in maturity. And be, Lord, bless every family, Lord Father. They pray for the older people, Lord, elderly people. They pray especially for Mrs. Moses, Lord, heal her and restore her as you pray your healing hand upon her, Lord. In the name of Jesus, she be healed, Lord Father. And come home, Lord, rejoicing, Lord Father. They pray, Lord Father. Others, Lord Father, Benji's mother, Mrs. Rose, and McCartan's Evans, and also both of us and other elderly people, Lord Father, that Lord, you have hand of protection and blessing upon everyone, Lord Father. And they pray, Lord, that even in the old age, Lord, you have promised to keep good, give the elderly people good health and strength. Lord, I pray, Lord, that continue to give us good health and strength and also protect us from any call, Lord Father. They, Thank you, Lord Father, that elderly people may be a great blessing to the younger people, Lord Father. And Lord, we pray for the elders and the families, bless them. Lord, continue to be, that you all the wisdom that we need, Lord, to carry on the work you have entered in your hands, Lord Father. They pray, Lord Father, for Roshan, Lord Roshan, Father, comfort him at this point of time, Lord, as he lost his mother. Spirit of God, you are God who gives peace, Lord. They pray, Lord, give him the peace that passes our understanding at this point of time, Lord. The person be with him, Lord, for our him. And I thank you, Lord, Father, that he, all the blessing that we have received from the hands, Lord. Thank you for a great love to us, Lord, Father. Who are we that are our mind flowers? Yet, Lord, you love and care for us, and we enjoy your love and care and blessing every day in our life. All glory and honor to you, Lord, Father. They pray, Lord, Father, for this Corona virus, Lord Father, Lord, sweeping all over the world, and people are dying. Lord, be gracious, gracious God. Lord, for you, the sins of the people, and Lord, heal the land according to promise, Lord Father. And also, Lord, they may be able to, Lord, find the vaccine so that people may be saved, Lord Father. And they commit, Lord, this Corona virus, Lord, protect our people, our 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 own loving. People in the church, Lord Father. Not one will get the corona disease, Lord Father. I believe, Lord Father, you are God who protect us and Lord, you are God who gives good health and strength, Lord Father. Thank you, Lord Father, that we could gather together, Lord Father, and time together, Lord Father. Even though we are not physically present, but yet, Lord, in spirit, we are one, Father, and also, Lord, we enjoy the time together, Lord Father. We give all glory and honor to you, Lord Father. Bless this time together. Bless this service, Lord, as we commit it in your hands. Thank you, Lord Father. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I greet you all in the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, it's a joy for me to be here today, worshiping with Peniel. For those of you who do not know me, I'm Samuel Mohit and uh, I was attending Peniel between 2014 and uh, 2018 while I was doing my bachelor's in VIT. Peniel has helped me in, uh, in many ways uh, in shaping my walk with Christ and I'm really grateful for that. So I'm really happy to be here today. Uh, so before getting into worship, uh, I have request each of you to close your eyes and think for a moment and thank God for the life that He's given. Let's all close our eyes. Let's thank God uh, today if we are alive and if we have food on our plates and if we are breathing properly, it's all because of His grace and mercy. So let us thank God and let us thank God for His great mercies. His mercies are new every morning. Even this morning we gathered here to pray. There are a lot of people around the world who are not able to pray, not able to gather. But it is by His great mercies that we are here right now, saved from the destruction and brought with His precious blood. So let us look to the Lord and thank Him. Father, we thank You for this day, Lord Jesus. Thank You for this very moment, Father, Lord, that we are alive, Lord Jesus, Father. Lord, we thank You for Your great faithfulness, Father, Lord, Your steadfast love, Father, Lord. It never ceases, Lord Jesus. 
for that steadfast love, Lord Jesus. We praise you and we honor you, Father, Lord. There is nothing that, Father, we could give you in return, Father, Lord, but heart full of worship. With heart full of worship, we come before you today, Father, Lord. Lord, accept our service, Father, Lord. Help us, Lord Jesus, to worship you with all our heart, mind, and soul, Lord Jesus. Lord, let our worship be defined by the truth and in spirit. Father, Lord, we thank you and we praise you. We invite you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. from verse 18. 
Isaiah chapter 40 verse from verse 18 To whom then will you liken God or what likeness compare with him? An idol, a craftsman casts it and a goldsmith overlays it with gold and casts it for silver chains. He who is too impoverished for an offering chooses wood that will not rot. He seeks out a skillful craftsman to set up an idol that will not move. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to dwell in, who brings princes to nothing, and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness. Scarcely are, the pla are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. When he blows on them, and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, that I should be like him, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and to him who has no might. He increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. Here we read how great our God is and how powerful He is. So He is the one who created everything that we see, the whole universe is created by Him. Even us, each one of us are created in His own image. So that is the God we are worshipping. He is not a mere idol or anyone. Even the Bible says that he, he, the Lord does whatever He pleases. So there is no one who can instruct Him and His knowledge and understanding is unscrutable. So let's worship that great and amazing God. Hallelujah. So the next song that we are going to sing is a Hindi song, Sena Unka Yehova. If you know this song, please sing along with me. And uh, if you do not know this song, please learn the song. The lyrics will be up there. It is a beautiful song. Uh, yeah, let's all sing along. Say now, Unka Yehova, Hamare Sangi Sangi Hai. So the meaning of the song goes like, The Lord of hosts is with us. The Lord of Jacob is with us. If the God of Jacob is with us, then there is nothing that we need to worry about. So the first stanza goes like, uh, In the Old Testament where we see from our ancestors, God divided the Red Sea and He made a way in between that. So that's how our God is. That's how great our God is. He can make way between anything. And right now, even, even though if you're going through anything and you're looking for a hope and a way out, remember our God can do anything. Our, there's nothing impossible to our God. Even if we see in the New Testament, He's the one who has risen Lazarus from death. So uh, even death and life, there is nothing impossible to God. There is nothing that God cannot do. So with that in mind, let's keep and let's sing praises to our God, the Lord of hosts. Say now. 
for each one of us father lord there is no goodness that you saw and came father lord, but it is purely for your name sake and father lord and purely it's your grace and your love father lord we thank you for that lord jesus lord even as we come to you father lord we are in your presence lord jesus we pray that lord you cleanse us father lord you cleanse us you make us holy father lord and you make us more like you lord jesus father we want to become like you father lord lord we want to lord be like you father lord like how you are father lord we want to be like that father lord lord change our hearts father lord transform our lives father lord transform us to lord to be to your image father lord yes, jesus share the story of a very well-known hymn, How Great Thou Art. The origin of this hymn may be found with Swedish pastor Karl Boberg around 1886. Boberg was a leading evangelist and poet of his day, also serving in the Swedish parliament. It is said that the inspiration for this hymn came one day as he was caught in a thunderstorm on the coastal town of Monsteras in southeast Sweden. The violence of the storm, followed by the return of the calm and the sun and the singing birds, left him falling on his knees in awe. Soon he penned the nine stanzas of the original version in Swedish, beginning with O Stor Gud. It was published in a local newspaper and several years later, Boberg unexpectedly heard his poem sung by a congregation to an old Swedish folk melody. Subsequently, it was translated into German and Russian. There was an earlier literal translation into English by Gustav Johnson, which never really did catch on. In the early 1930s, Stuart K. Hine 
an English missionary first heard the Russian version of O Storgut in the Ukraine. One day, as the Hain couple crossed into Subcarpathian Russia, the mountain scenery brought back the memory of the song. The first three stanzas were composed while in the Carpathian mountain. When war broke out, Hein and his wife were forced to return to England in 1939. They used the first three stanzas in their evangelistic endeavors, and the fourth stanza was added after the war. A translation is, of course, more art than science, and Hein took some liberties, most particularly with the title, which in 1949 he rechristened How Great Thou Art. Hein published his English translation alongside the Russian version in Grace and Peace, a magazine that was circulated to missionaries in over 15 countries. British-American evangelist J. Edwin Orr traveled to India in 1954 and heard an English version of How Great Thou Art sung by a Naga choir from the state of Assam in northeast India. He was so impressed by the song that he brought it back to America. When Tim Spencer, the owner of Manor Music Inc., heard the song, he quickly arranged to buy the rights to the song and then did what all good publishers do. He started pushing the song and it eventually landed in the hands of George Beverly Shea, the famed soloist in the Billy Graham Crusades. Billy Graham reportedly loved the song and quickly made it his Evangelistic Crusades signature song. The first two stanzas establish the grandeur of God's creation, while the refrain establishes our response, how great thou art. In stanza three, the God of the natural created order continues the creative act by sending God's Son to redeem a lost humanity. With this stanza, the primary theological perspective shifts from creation to atonement. While the first two stanzas express humanity's awe at the natural created order, this is not the ultimate goal of the hymn. Human sin has marred the gift of the Creator. The vivid description of nature in the first two stanzas finds its fulfillment in heaven or when we escape the earth. The final stanza, however, may be seen as the completion of the story of creation and human redemption. It's all very well to be singing how great thou art when things are beautiful and life is going well. But the power in this song is in its ability to take our eyes off our circumstances and focus them on a great God who is far bigger, far greater than our circumstances. Probably one of my most vivid memories of singing this song was at the memorial service of two Mission Aviation Fellowship pilots who lost their lives in a fatal air crash in Papua New Guinea. The crowded church was filled with people singing with tears streaming down their cheeks. How great thou art when we had lost our friends. The song has been translated into numerous languages. And today I want to share with you a recording that I've done with some of my Papua New Guinean friends in Tok Pisin, which is the state, which is the national language of PNG. Oh, 
As we prepare this morning to celebrate communion at the Lord's table, let us meditate on the words of Paul from Romans 5 verse 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Last Sunday, as a church, we were reminded that Christ died to set us free from the captivity to sin, self, and Satan. We were also reminded that our salvation cost us nothing, but it cost Christ his life. Our salvation was for free, but it cost Christ his life. With these words, let us remember the passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. As brothers and sisters in Christ, shall we assemble the elements of the supper and keep it before us as we pray. Thank you, Lord, for this reminder of your painful sacrifice upon the cross. We pray that you will pour out your precious life into us afresh as we partake of this bread and the wine which represents your body and your blood. Shall we eat of the bread and drink of the wine in remembrance of the Lord's precious sacrifice? Thank you, Lord, that you have set us free from every spiritual bondage through Christ. May we live victorious lives in Christ, trusting not in our own righteousness, but in your power made perfect in our weakness. Lord, we pray that you will continue to fill us with the wisdom and all the blessings and the gifts that we receive in Christ. May the rest of the service continue to enrich us as we meditate and study your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Hello Church, I am excited to be part of today's service and today's reading will come from Hebrews chapter 11 verse 8 to 12 and 17 to 19. Verse 8, it was faith that made Abraham obey when God called him to go out to a country which God had promised to give him. He left his own country without knowing where he was going. By faith he lived as a foreigner in the country that God had promised him. He lived in tents as did Isaac and Jacob, who received the same promise from God. For Abraham was waiting for the city which God has designed and built, the city with permanent foundations. Verse 11. It was faith that made Abraham able to become a father, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself could not have children. He trusted God to keep his promise. Verse 12. Though Abraham was practically dead, from this one man came as many descendants as there are stars in the sky, as many as the numberless grains of the sand on the seashore. Verse 17. It was faith that made Abraham offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice when God put Abraham to the test. Abraham was the one to whom God had made the promise, yet he was ready to offer his only son as a sacrifice. God had said to him, It is through Isaac that you will have the descendants I promised. Abraham reckoned that God was able to raise Isaac from, the de from death, and so to speak, Abraham did receive Isaac back from death. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. I take this opportunity to thank you for... Um, inviting me to speak to you uh, at this time. Uh, these are very interesting times where we are all called to be distant from each other physically, but virtually to be together. And even as so many of us have got used to now virtually connecting with one another um, on the internet, online, on Zoom, and sometimes through recorded versions, um, I know that the Lord is taking the body of Christ into a different level altogether. And we will continue to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Uh, this, morn uh, this, uh, this morning, even as I was um, uh, really praying about what I should speak and what I should share uh, to each one of you, uh, this word has been coming to me for the for for a short while in this season of the pandemic and uh, uh, you know a, a situation that world over we are we are seeing so many difficulties and what what was it it is about this word faith the word faith and interestingly the Abraham is seen as a kind of a father figure on faith and uh, so I was really attracted to what exactly is it that Abraham uh, qualified or uh, made him eligible to be somebody who was quoted as a man who had faith. So even this time, I just want to, um, uh, you know, pick up on a few things about Abraham. You know, one of the fascinating things about Abraham, that he was very human. He was just like us. There was, you know, he maybe did not even have a halo around his head. He was just an ordinary man. He was a man who would, um, you know, qualify like just anybody else down the street. Maybe one of those of us who are just going to church and looking at things as they are. But he was a man. And the interesting thing is, you know, when you go back to chapter 12 of Genesis, you first hear about Abraham. And, uh, you know, God gives him a word. God speaks to him and he tells him, look, get out of your country and I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will bless those who bless you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Very simple assurance that God had given Abraham that he was going to become a big nation. And because of him, a whole lot of people, families of the earth will be blessed. Now, if you and I had been in Abraham's place, we would have thought now, you know, how is this going to happen? And we would have thought to ourselves, you know, is this really, am I hearing it right? And, but then, you know, the interesting thing about Abraham's um, uh, thing is that God keeps talking to him. Sometimes just a little bit and he keeps talking to him. And in chapter 12, you know, you will find at least 3 and 13 of Genesis, 
at least three times, you know, uh, Abraham builds an altar to the Lord. So God has spoken to him and he immediately responds, meaning to say that he accepted what God was telling him. And then you go to the 15th chapter of Genesis. Now this time, Abraham comes to God with all his humanness. You see, again now, after speaking so many times to Abraham, um, uh, God is again talking to him in chapter 15. So chapter 12, chapter 13, and now chapter 15. Now here it starts in chapter 15 of Genesis. It says, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, and don't be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. So God says, look, I am your shield. I am the great reward that you really want. But when he says that, you know, Abraham comes out with all his humanness. He says, look, Lord God, what will you give me? Look at this. I am going childless. And the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Eliezer, all of us know, was man, the man who was actually a servant to Abraham. Then Abraham said, look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. And then the word of the Lord came to him. And this is, this one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. And then he says, then he brought him outside and said, look towards the heavens and count the stars if you're able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. That was the word that God had given him. The fascinating part is verse 6 in chapter 15 of Genesis. It says that, he believed God, he believed in the Lord, and he accounted it to him for righteousness. Now, Abraham believed what God said. And because he believed, his righteousness report card had full marks. Because he believed, and because he believed, his righteousness report card was full. And then we know, you know, God continues to engage with him. And then later on, you, you find, uh, you know, when um, um, uh, the angels come in chapter 18 and God speaks to him about Sarah getting a child. And it's all looking very, you know, weird. It's all looking weird. It's all looking as though it won't happen. Because the first time God spoke to Abraham, he was 75 years old. Now he's almost going to be 100. And it, it looks weird. But then it does not say anywhere that Abraham disbelieved. Abraham took God at his word. Now this morning, I just want to bring that word faith back into focus to each one of us. The word faith, I am called to live believing in the word of the Lord. I want to be righteous in his sight. I know that righteousness comes by being washed by the blood of the Lamb. And God is asking me to bring in that element of faith right into the middle of what he has given to me and what he has assured to me. You see, and then it goes on to say in um, uh, chapter 22, I mean, we know Isaac was born. Of course, Sarah laughed a little bit, then denied it. But then Sarah believed, obviously. And lo and behold, Isaac was born. And in chapter 22, verse 1 says, Now God tested Abraham. And I believe I have faith. You believe you have faith. But so many times... It is almost as though there is a test of faith. Sometimes God brings that test of faith. Sometimes the devil would rather push us in a bind, play with our minds because of our circumstances or because of things happening around us. And then he, his principal goal, like a roaring lion, is to knock your faith off its foundations. And so... Faith is the devil's target. Because the minute faith is not there, my belief in the Lord and that he will accomplish what he said he will accomplish, that takes a back seat. 
So this is why we need to go back to the word faith. My faith. I know, I'm assuming all of you sitting here, at one point in time, accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior, and the word faith came alive, and you knew that day, and for maybe weeks and months, and maybe a few years, that you are now a faith person, that you actually believe, that you actually believe. But this uh, faith, the more it takes root in you, this belief in God, the more it takes in, in you, begins to affect your mind, it begins to affect your thinking, it begins to affect your actions. It begins to affect your attitudes. Faith is not an empty word. It is not some kind of a hollow thing, you know. Uh, I have a belief statement and this is the belief statement. It's not something I can look at on a, you know, on somewhere outside of me. Faith is from the heart. And because it's from the heart, it begins to affect my thinking, my attitude, my feelings, because faith is something in which my entire belief system is now based on the word of God and on what God says. I am willing to receive what God is speaking to me and I believe it. You see, when in chapter 22, God puts Abraham to the test. He tells him, take your only son, Isaac, and we know the whole sequence. He says, sacrifice him. And Abraham does. Takes him two days and on the third day is when the actual action takes place. After God has told him, he's taking Isaac. Isaac says, where is the lamb? And then Abraham gives that famous statement. My son, God will provide himself a lamb. You know, the interesting thing is, Abraham got Isaac after a big time struggle. It was a life struggle for him before his own child was born. Somewhere in between, he got lost. He thought his servant was the, you know, was the only way it's all going to happen. Or the wife also thought that. But he overcame all that and God blessed him with a son. Now God is saying, give up your son. And Abraham must have thought to himself, is God speaking to me? Am I hearing voices? And all that, he must have had a lot of doubts, but he still went ahead and said, no, on the uh, three days, on the third day, after God has spoken to him, he actually comes to the point of offering. He's tied up Isaac. And then God intervenes and says, stop. The angel of the Lord says, stop. Now, Abraham's faith was so strong and we're going to just look at that one or two verses there, that he knew God had given him this son. And if God is going to take this son, he would give him another son. Or if the word of God says, to the extent that God may actually bring Isaac back to life, even if he died. That was the belief system of Abraham. That was the belief system of Abraham. I just want to read one or two small things from Romans and then Hebrews and then uh, sum this up and close. You see, when you look at Romans chapter 5, it talks about Abraham's, uh, sorry, Romans chapter 4, it talks about Abraham's faith. Now, this is in the first verse in Romans chapter 4. What then shall we say that Abraham, our father, has found according to the flesh? For Abraham was justified by works. He has something to boast about, but not before God. But what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And then it goes down to say in verse 9, uh, verse um, um, yeah, 13, and a lot of verses there on Abraham. For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. 
and there's a lot on faith there. So Abraham, it says, simply believed. And it was not a head belief. It was a heart belief. A belief from the heart. And just look at um, uh, Hebrews, in Hebrews 11, that famous chapter on uh, faith. It says, verse 8, By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. So when God told him to get out, and when all the big promises came, you know, Abraham was actually living in tents. He was a tent man. But he still believed that God was going to accomplish what he had claimed to be. By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and so on. And then it says, later down in verse 17 of chapter 11 of Hebrews, By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, In Isaac your seed shall be called, concluding that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from which he also received him in a figurative sense. You know, so actually Isaac was as good as dead. But God knew, uh, Abraham knew, that God was able to pull this Isaac from the dead. And that's why he went and did all that God had asked him to do and God had wanted him to do. Friends, I want to just, you know, put this entire passages from Genesis, Romans chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 11, put it together and try to kind of sum it up in some very two, three uh, things, very simple things that we need to look at today. Faith is believing. Faith is believing from the heart. Faith is believing from the heart. Believing in what God is saying. In what God is saying. Two, God keeps speaking to us. He keeps telling us. He sometimes speaks to us through the word of God when he's talking to you, when you're doing your meditation and quiet time with him. Sometimes he speaks to you through someone else, maybe through church, through fellowship. But he is speaking to you. And even as he speaks to you, it is my call to listen and believe. And like in Abraham's case, God is continuing to speak the word again and again and again. It is something that is a continuous thing, I believe. It's not as the God speaks one word and then that's it. He speaks to us. He reinforces what he says because he believes that you, he has chosen you. So God's word keeps coming to us. The third thing we must understand in Abraham and this whole father of faith that we are looking at Abraham also believed in God's sovereignty. Now that's a tough call for me. For a long time, it's been something that has been so much in my mind and focus. God's sovereignty. You know, when God is sovereign and I have to accept his sovereignty. So as much as faith is there, as much as my belief in the heart is there, God's sovereignty is also there. God is. And he determines that all things work together for good for me. And so some things he works in the way I would like him to work. Some things he works differently, but ultimately it is for my good. And, it's, and it is good for the kingdom of God. And it is good in God's sight. So Abraham accepted the sovereign nature of God. And ultimately, God gave him Isaac. Everything that God promised him happened. And he gave him 
the same Isaac, the same desires were fulfilled, the same promises were fulfilled, and undergirding all of that was Abraham's belief in the sovereign nature of God. Now today, I don't know in what condition each one of us are. As we sit here listening, I don't know. I don't know your situation. You don't know mine. But let's just take this into context and say, look, where am I in my faith walk? In the situation that is confronting me, it could be the uncertainty that's plaguing the entire atmosphere that's got to me. It could be my circumstances which have been very unfavorable. It could be the challenges that I am not able to even think clearly. And even the word of God is sounding so conflicting to my experience. It really helps to sit down and write out what your belief is. Abraham believed and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So what do I believe in? Do I believe that God is good? To me? Do I believe that he knows my future? Do I believe that the number of days that I am going to live, he knows? And so what do I believe? Do I believe that when I pray, he actually listens and he answers? When I write down, sometimes I think, you know, writing down helps. Or, you know, if you're a computer person, just hammering, hammering away at the keys. What do I really believe in? Don't pray immediately. Just say, what do I believe in? What do I believe in? Abraham believed in the word of God. When I write down and I look at it my, for myself and say, yes, this is what he believed in. Then comes step two. I choose to accept God's truth in my life. And so... My entire heart is oriented to a higher level, a belief system where I know God is in control of my life and what he has promised, he will accomplish. He will fulfill the desires of my heart and all I need to do is commit my ways to him. Now, I believe that it is in challenging times that something more beautiful is born. Through struggle, something beautiful is born. Through a struggle of the faith and me writing down what I actually believe in begins to reinforce who God is in my life. And so I want to leave you with this. I want to leave you with this word faith. I want to leave you with this phrase, belief in the heart. I want to leave you with this word, sovereignty of God. I want to leave you with God speaks to you. And finally, write down what you actually believe. Take a hard look in cold terms. This is what I believe in. And then you choose to recognize that God is bigger than anything that you can think of. He is bigger than your life. He is bigger than time. He is bigger than all of history. And then I begin to trust him with my life. When that happens, I believe the peace of God is inevitable. It's inevitable. Where I receive the peace of God because he is in control of my life. I want to just pray with you and I, uh, I, I just pray that, you know, I, please join with me. I want to just pray for you and each one of you and bless you at this time. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this time. We thank you because, Master, your word is so true. And this morning, we know, Lord, that you are speaking to us every now and then. Every now and then you are speaking to us, Lord. And even as you speak to us, today we want to declare that you are our God. 
like Abraham believed you. We believe you, Lord. We believe you from our heart that you are the one who controls us, that you know the number of days that we are lived. Master, that all that has happened to us is for good, Master. And Lord, we pray today, we pray that you will lead us and that you will guide us, even as we submit completely to you. We leave all the Isaacs that you have given to us because we know, Master, when we trust you with what we have, we know we will get it back in full, Master, because you have promised, Lord, that you are in control of our lives. Today, Lord, I want to bless everybody, Lord, who has listened, Lord, to what I had to share, and I bless them with the blessing of the Lord. Master, wherever they feel something has been taken away, that you will do a restoration job in their lives, Master. Lord, a superior spiritual restoration that they will not be able to understand, which will trans translate into their own lives. Lord, and they will know that this is the goodness of God. More than that, this is the faithfulness of God. We bless your name. We worship you. And we pray, Lord, continue to lead us. Continue to speak to us, Master. Every now and then, encourage us, Lord, so that our faith, that we will, Lord, pass, Lord, the tests of righteousness, pass the tests of faith that you are laying in our paths, just so that we get closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for this opportunity. God bless you and may uh, you all be blessed during this season. You will come out victorious in the name of Jesus and you will be a blessing to many people. God bless you all. My loving Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for giving us your provision of coming to your throne of grace with our praises thanksgiving and supplication. Father, it is your provision through your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, we could come to you as your children with one accord to thank you and praise you. We praise you because you are worthy of all our praises, honor, power, and glory. We thank you for keeping us alive, safe, and healthy. We thank you for all the blessings each one of us received through the church retreat last weekend. Let your spirit continue to minister to our hearts and minds. We thank you for the time of worship today, your word that you gave us. Father, it is a privilege for us to worship you together week after week and hear your word through your people, through this virtual platform. It is your gracious provision for all of us. Lord, at this time, we pray that you mercifully search our hearts and make us aware of the things that is not pleasing in your sight. Forgive us for all the times when we willfully disobeyed you. Cleanse us, O Master, refine us and draw us closer to you. We are prone to wander away from you. So, Father, draw us closer to you. We thank you for Dr. Benji and his team, whom you are using as your channel of blessing to organize our services through online every week. Thank you for the daily fellowship time in the evenings. We thank you for Thomas Uncle and Nalni Auntie, whom you have blessed and whom you are using all these years. Father, we thank you because you have blessed them with good health and strength thus far. We pray that you would be with them, bless them, and let them continue to be a channel of blessing for many. Thank you for each and every member of our church, senior citizens, families, young parents, students, and children. We may not know all their needs, but we commit all of us into your loving hands. Let each one of us experience your comfort, grace, strength, and guidance every day in our lives. Keep working in us and through us, Father. We pray for CMC Hospital and all those who are working there. We pray that those who are in the authority will be guided by your wisdom so that your perfect will will be accomplished through this institution. We thank you for every staff who are working among the patients and who are exposed to the infection. Father God, 
the God who called them, called each one of them for this ministry is faithful to take care of them. We pray for your protection upon all of them. We pray for health workers all over India. We pray for all our students who are at home in different places. Be with them in these days of uncertainty and anxiety. Thank you for the institutions and the teachers that are taking every effort to teach these students and keep them engaged. Father, we pray for your protection upon all our students. We pray for the young people and youth who are facing a lot of pressures. Let your word cleanse their hearts and minds and let it be a lamp unto their feet. It is easy to be drawn into the pleasures of the world. Let your spirit protect them. At this time, we pray for Roshan and his family, Lord. Let your comforting presence and grace surround him and all the grieving members of his family. We pray for your mission work and all the mission hospitals. Let the work of your people bear fruit. We remember the missionaries who are sharing the gospel to the many unreached people and people groups of India. In many places, there are a lot of oppositions as well as restrictions, but as they devise different ways to reach the people with your love, guide them, Father, strengthen the hands of the missionaries and bless their work. We remember the missionaries whom we support, our church supports, the voice of the shepherd, BYM missionaries, IEM missionaries, EMFI work, Missionary Upholders Trust, Navajiva Seva Mandal Ministry. Father, we pray that you will bless the efforts of all your children and let them be guided by you. We thank you for the Bengali Ministry, Karunaila Ministry, Youth for Christ and Scripture Union Ministry. We pray for your blessing upon all the people who are involved in it. We remember the places and the people where your people are persecuted. Guard them from fear and discouragement. Strengthen their faith, Father. Grant them your inner strength and boldness. We pray for those who are in authority in our country, our president, our prime minister and his team, chief ministers and their teams. Father, let these people, let the people of, uh, uh, let those who are in authority work with justice and honesty and bless our land. We, as we step into this new week, be with each one of us. Help us to remain as little light and salt wherever you have placed us. We ask all this in your precious name. Amen. Father Almighty, we just come before your presence to thank you for each one of your children who are celebrating their birthday this week. We pray for Joshua Singh, Paul Johan, Vineet Mathai, uh, Dr. Daisy Singh, Sudha Jasmine, Alan Paul and Kiran James. We thank you, Father, because you know, knew them even before they were in their mother's womb. And all the days ordained for them were written in your book even before one of them came to be. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because your thoughts to them are precious. Lead them in paths of righteousness for your name's sake and protect them that their heart would turn towards you and they would find hope and strength through each day. I want to especially pray for Joshua Singh as he prepares for his uh, studies um, and for his entrance exams. Lord, we pray for your wisdom and understanding um, and grace as he goes through these online classes. And as he waits on you, Lord, open his heart to receive your word daily and to know that the plans that you have for him are perfect. Father Hemley, we pray for Paul Johan. We thank you, Lord, for his life and for his work. We pray that you bless him and protect him, Lord, in this coming days as he works in the hospital and lead him, Lord, uh, in every decision that he takes, Father. I pray, Lord, that your presence will be very close to him and that his heart will be strengthened because he knows that you are the God who goes before him and opens the doors for him. Reveal your plans for the coming year into his heart, Father, and let him know you more closely as he walks um, this walks through this year, Father. We bless him in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we want to thank you for Vineet Matai and want to thank you because 
you have called him with a very specific purpose and you will uh, lead him in this coming days lord as he works as he prepares for entrance exams lord whatever he does father i pray lord that your hand will be upon him father and that you will bless um bless him in every work father and that your protection will be upon him father and make him a blessing lord uh, to all his patients to his colleagues to his seniors to his uh, family lord uh, in every interaction lord i pray lord that you will be glorified I want to thank you for dr daisy saying and um, pray lord that um, as she waits on you lord um i pray lord that she will be strengthened in your love and as she provides for a home and a family as a mother as a wife as a grandmother i pray lord that you will equip her with every good work father and that her heart will be will know you lord in the midst of you know, all the needs that there are there in her home and that let her be a blessing lord to our church and to your church father uh, in the country and in the world globally father use our lord for your kingdom we pray father we want to thank you for dr sudha jasmine and want thank you for her life we want to uh, praise you for every good gift that you have blessed her with father and pray lord that um the coming year lord you will bless her even more abundantly with grace and wisdom uh, with all the responsibilities that she has taken lord um in the institution and in the church father I pray Lord that you lead her with the truth of your word father that where there is darkness father there will be your light father where there is despair lord your hope uh, will shine through lord through the work that she does father which is bless her in the name of Jesus I want to thank you for Alan Paul and pray Lord that you would lead him through his studies in BIT lord you would uh, be with him even during this time in all his preparations and all his plans father I pray that he will know you and he will be glorified through his life. I want to commit Kiran James into your hands. We pray Lord that um uh, as he continues with his work, I pray Lord that he will experience your presence every day, Father. And as he waits on you, Father, that he will grow in favor of your love for him, Father. And every day, Lord, he will experience your uh, the beauty of the work that you're doing in his life and you will reveal lord your plans lord even as he applies for the visa and uh, waits on you father i pray lord that you will open the right doors for him uh, and that he would grow in his knowledge and understanding of what you are doing lord in him and um, through him in that place father bless him and protect him lord from all the dangers that are there uh, that surrounds um, in the place there lord pray lord for grace and your mercy to lead him each day we well, thank you and praise you lord for each of these children who are part of our church and uh, thank you because you have called them and you will lead them even in the coming year for we ask this in jesus precious name amen let us close this service with benediction to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy the only god our savior the glory uh, honor and power and power in through jesus christ our lord amen god bless you Joy and the pain I made
Lifting 